week I was sharing out of Colossians chapter 2, wasn't it? And, um, and we kind of started uh, at verse 9. <clears throat> For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I want to go back through these scriptures, but I want to, before I do that, uh, that says, and, and you remember, it says it all through this verses in Colossians for in him, in him, in him. And in him means in union with him. All right, we could take that any number of ways. Um, we could, number one, we could take it a theological way. Okay, well, theologically I'm in Christ, though I'm really not. I'm sitting here in a classroom and I'm not really there. But he wants me to believe I'm there. So I believe it. Because I'm a Christian, and that's what Christians do. So I'm safe. Everything's wonderful. All right. <clears throat> so um, keep your place there in Colossians, but let's go to John chapter 15, <clears throat> and we'll look at Jesus' example, because this is Paul talking about it, talking about being in union with him, but this is Jesus' example of what that union is supposed to look like that in him kind of thing. So verse 1, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. So he starts off with the, the um, source on the inside. The true vine is that. And he'll go on to say we're his branches. He is the source on the inside of us of everything that Colossians talks about. But then he says, my father is the husbandman, and this is the one, he's called father, and, but the, the, the uh, title here is husbandman, and this is the one who basically wants something out of the vine and his branches, which is referred to as fruit or manifestation of the life. It's within. Okay. So it's, it's important to understand each of them's place because they, uh, Jesus goes back and forth several times on, on uh, the place of the Father and um, the place that he has among us. Um, and even though we're recording, I have to say this. Jennifer, I would really, really, really love it if this year you could come to the gathering. And if you do, I will put you to work releasing Christ. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Um, every branch in me. All right. So this is what's in him. But it's, he's, he's. Liking it unto, we're in the John 15, verse 1, 2. Um, he's liking it unto a branch that is in union with him. In him. Every branch in me. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him. So this is the... This is the true definition of what it means to be in him. It's not a theological thing at all. I mean, I, mean, I guess if you wanted to explain it, you can. But, but Jesus wasn't trying to give us a theology of in Christ. It wasn't in his mind. And I don't believe necessarily Paul was trying to do that in Colossians chapter 2 either. He's trying to, uh, and, and the proof of that of Colossians uh, two will be Colossians three, where it gets into what fruit gets into fruit. Okay, so it's divided up. Now, remember Colossians; it was one letter. It wasn't divided up into chapters, right? So it's just it's just one thought that he's flowing with. Um, okay, so Jesus says, I am the vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. All right, so let's stop right there. So Jesus knows his position in this equation. 
Jesus knows, and as I said before, as we finish this sentence, he knows our place in the equation. And here he mentions the Father's place in the equation. All right. Every branch in me, in union with me, that is drawing from me, that is drawing my life from me into your vessel called a branch. See? I mean, like, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians talks about we have this treasure in earthen vessels, but in that example, the earthen vessel really has no part in the thing. You just, you're a container only. You're not really a um, <laughs> purveyor of the manifestations of his life per se. This certainly rounds that area of truth up nicely. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Okay, so um, why does he immediately start with, I'm the vine, I'm the true vine, and my father and the husband, and, and you know, if you'll abide in me, you will bring forth fruit and everything's going to be rosy. Because he does do that later. Why doesn't he do that from the very beginning? I believe he doesn't do that from the beginning because he's trying to show the part of each one, every branch in me. Because if you are in me, if you are in union with me in such a way, can you, can you grasp the phrase in such a way? That my life is in you. You in me and I in you. Okay. So we say, well, I'm in Christ because there's a circle on the other side of the cross. And Randy always draws us over there in that circle. So I'm in Christ because of the circle that made it past the cross. Um, a little more complicated than that. Um, it it involves abiding, <clears throat> but our example a lot of times of abiding has nothing to do with, can I say it like this, sucking the life out of Jesus, <laughs> except for he still has his life in, in him as well as in us. Our place is to, and this is where it says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Okay, so he's immediately talking about fruit because why? Why? Because he started with the Father, him and the Father. This whole thing started with him and the Father and the Holy Spirit. At this verse, this chapter, it all starts with him and the Father, and his first concern is not the branches, but what the Father's going to get out of this. Okay? And we're so concerned about my place in the, in the whole scheme of things that we are not doing for him, we're doing for ourselves, which is contrary to the life we're supposed to be drawing from him. Uh, it, it immediately, I mean, you, you only get to two verses and it, you we're immediately confronted with uh, selfishness or uh, self-centeredness or uh, self-centric ways of thinking and feel and emotions running in those directions. Well, of course, it comes natural to us. But we're going to see, as we have seen in Colossians, we're going to see that he really deals with that with the cross. He doesn't deal with that with reforming us, educating us, um, uh, you know, walking with us. He does it through the cross. And it's a complete work. And you see that all the way through ch uh, chapter 3. And then, as I said, then it really gets into the practical. Um, because all the quote-unquote theological reality of this does you no good if you don't understand that to be in him is a union like a branch to a vine with one purpose, not Christian fruit, but his fruit, or the fruit of the Spirit. Either way, it's not your fruit. 
And so why do we why do we stand in front of people and write on the chalkboard the fruit of the spirit and then we say okay you need to be more loving you know when you you please don't no seriously because it's still not what he wants my father is the husbandman he that beareth not fruit which is going to him this is going to him it's how's it getting to him through the vine who is now no longer confined to just vine paths but branch paths called us the church and we're the we're the branch path and as such the fruit is meant to come through us okay the fruit of what the fruit of him not not the external vine him but the internal life him that is in the vine. So, I mean, these scriptures can sound very simplistic until you start realizing, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. This is, this is calling. This is calling for uh, things to line up and line up according to Jesus. It's, it's almost as if he's saying, I'm the true vine. And now some of you know the scriptures, so this might be meaningful to you I am the true vine and my father wants fruit out of it and that's what we're doing it's it's almost as if the vine well the vine is talking here the vine is talking to to people and you can say well he's talking to his disciples yes he is but he eventually in his death wants to be able to impart his life so that they become more than disciples so that they become what? Branches or fruit bearers, which happens where? From the branches, <laughs> okay. So, so it's like we're just kind of in here to help facilitate Jesus doing what he wants to do, his life coming in us and through us the fruit that is of him comes to the Father, and the Father is able to pick the fruit and enjoy it because it's the fruit of the Son. And it's the Son giving the, the, the husbandman um, the, the desire of his heart because he's a husbandman, and that's what, he's, that's what he's in this for, like a farmer or anything else. All right, so... <clears throat> The way, thank you, brother. The way um, for us to enter that is to begin to step back from being a branch for a moment and consider the vine and the husbandman and the way that this is set up is that the vine wants to give the husbandman, the father, something. And the father wants to receive something that is really out from the vine. And the way that they have chosen for this to happen is through us, branches. Okay, so that means that, means that what we do is in stepping back, we say okay i see your heart true vine i see your heart i see what you want i see your purpose but more than that because and i tend to not use the word purpose as much as i used to because it's not a purpose it's a heart thing of the son towards the father yes it it has purpose but when we say we start talking about the eternal purpose of god you have to go right to his heart and say, what did he want in the very beginning? It wasn't just a God who said, eh, let's do this. This will be fun. <laughs> go this way. No. This is still an eternal relationship before the foundation of the world. Father, son. So now they've taken on new form, as it were, not new inside form, but new external form. Son is now vine, and father is now husbandman, and now we're put into the equation, and so the prayer would be, 
Lord, make me a better branch. No. No. And Bebelot, no. No. It is Jesus. Flow into me. Make a connection. Let, let me hold on to the connection. <laughs> but that you might send forth that which the Father desires. Father, move in such a manner that I, that through me, because of Jesus, not because of me, because of him, his fruit can satisfy you and make you happy. And you see the difference? Other than, well, I want to be a Christian. I want to bring forth Christian fruit. Yes, sir. I want to do the right thing. And <laughs> did you have something? Yeah. I just had a picture when you were talking about uh, be more loving and then you're talking about the fruit and the blood. It would be like hanging um, Christmas ornaments on, on the branches along where the grapes are supposed to be. <laughs> right. <laughs> something like that. And, and be like, there you go. You know, that's right. that our efforts are just yeah. a silly. Absolutely. Thing. It is, well, I used to call it Christmas tree fruit. <laughs> Uh, as compared to living for it, you know. <clears throat> um, so, we're over 20 minutes in, and we've only discussed one and a half verse, but Jesus has a lot more to say and to, to help us. He's speaking to future branches, okay? And you know, just like just like what I said to to those that were on Skype or or to Jennifer when she came in, you know, I need you. Jesus is saying, I need you to finish this out. I I do. Okay. Every branch that beareth not fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Oh. Or every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. All right. So, and you know the process of purging <clears throat> when it pertains to trees, because most of you have been taught, or you know somewhat of, you know, agriculture or something like that. But if you cut a, a rose bush back, or if you cut a fruit tree back, it can spring forth more. Okay. Um, what we know is the example. We don't know the real thing because when he tries to purge us, we think it's just circumstances or the devil. We can't recognize it. We've heard it. When somebody asks us, we're, we're a vault full of wonderful uh, teaching. But it's, but what, what we need to do is, in our circumstances, in our lives, when something happens, that may not just be the devil, or that may not just be random circumstances. It may be the Father cutting you back so that he can get more fruit out of you, more Jesus out of you. Father, it's the Father, the Father, trying to get more of the vine, not more of you. Oh, he's praying in me because he really likes me, you know. He'd like a lot more of me. <laughs> Trust me, that's not the case. So, if we if we're okay, so that so that is why we cannot just study the Bible. And that's why we teach what we do to, to students and whatever. We teach it and we say, okay. You know, you're going to be put in life circumstances. We don't have to do it around here, trust me. You know, welcome to Acts. It just happens. <laughs> but, but the Lord, the not, not, the, not the vine, the husbandman will say to you as a branch, I need more Jesus out of you. And we go, Okay, I'll work harder. I'll knuckle down and I'll really, really, you know, until I bring forth what you want. You want it and I want you to be happy. Okay, you want me to be happy? Then 
shut up and, <laughs> and listen to the process. All you have to do is get into the process. You have to, it's not about you redoubling your efforts at, at the altar. It is the Father saying, here's what I want. Don't redouble your efforts. Don't cry. Don't, you know, don't, don't go into all this stuff that you go into. Let's just do this. I'm going to appear to you, who knows, a week, two weeks, three days, I don't know. I'm going to appear to you in the form of what looks like a trial. Maybe you'll be asked not to, you know, be involved in worship anymore or, or you know, any, some area that you, you know, you feel the juice, but it's not him. <laughs> um, um, but that will affect you. You'll say, I'm being cut back. I'm being asked not to talk, or I'm being asked not to, whatever, I don't know, you know. And, and, and I'm asking you, because it's the Father still talking to the branch, I'm asking you to be aware that your life isn't just random stuff going on out here, that those things are not only God sent, like maybe you have thought they're God sent, I'm the husbandman and I'm doing it to you. See the machete? You know. <laughs> Anybody ever seen like a rose bush or something really cut back, it looks like it's going to die. You know, it's like, oh, what have you done to me? You know, but then, then it just blooms forth and it's beautiful. Well, how much more us? But we're missing the point if we just throw another fit or we just, you know, go into another pity party. That's, that is not what the Father wants. See, he's not a counselor. You know, he's not a, 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 you know, psychiatrist or psychologist. Oh, you poor little branch. You've been mistreated, haven't you? You know, by me <laughs> and Jesus and the cross. All friends, by the way. <clears throat> we have to wake up to these things as realities and not great things that we've heard and now we can spew it out to somebody else. We have to do that. And if we don't do it, you can forget. You might as well just rip John 15 out of your Bible. Seriously. Might as well rip it out. If you're not going to really seriously dig in and say, Lord, I want this. I need this. I want to be with you in this. I want what, what Jesus the true vine wants, which is to bring you food, fruit. I want, Father, what you want, which is an increase of your son, but through us, but it's still just an increase of your son, a manifestation of another life instead of us. Um, if, if we never get past that, if we never get past circumstances and living like, you know, I mean, let me just say this. Shouldn't somewhere along the line all Christians stop living like you're following a religion on a globe instead of living according to the behests and life of Christ and the Father in a process of trying to bring forth more of his son and being aware of that? Because we see what I just said? I think everybody in this room, maybe everybody on Skype knows that. But we, we have to, you know, could we trade that in? You say, well, I don't want to give it up. Well, could we trade it in on really walking out of here and saying, okay, I'm tired of acting like anybody else who's not even born again around here. Oh, this is a crisis. You know? No. For them, maybe. For you, it is actively working to bring forth, number one, more of a union in him because when he cuts you back, you get a deeper flow of him. Well, you say, well, that's crazy. I mean, the process clearly means more of me, means more of him, you know, 
if I'm bigger and stronger and mightier for God. Strengthen me. Give me the tongue of a silver, you know, tongued angel. And he's going, cutting you back, going, well, it's enough of that. You know, I need my son out of you. Okay. Well, does he really? I mean, theologically, again, you know that. Theologically, you know he wants his son. You know he needs his son. But do we walk around with a heart that says he wants his son, he wants his son, that's what I want, I'm living for that, this is a, this is a clue how he can for sure get more, I want to just, I don't even need to look at the rest of the verses, I know that they're going to add more to it, I'm going to practice that right there, and I'm going to get my mind renewed to that right there, and I'm going to start living in that, okay. Because living in this is not, uh, as you'll see when he gets down towards the end of talking about all this, he says, I say these things unto you that my joy may be in you and your joy might be full. You say, well, it sounds like I'm just a useless stick. <laughs> no, you're not. He's trying to, the, he wants you full. Full of him and full of his joy. Because if, it's, if you're in him, you're not just getting his life, you're getting all the things that are of his life. Joy on a whole different level. You know, if you go with the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, faith, all that stuff that, that all Christians identify as Christianity, the Father says, if it's really that, I identify that as Christ. That's what he thinks. That's why the way he set it up. He, he's not going to change his mind. <laughs> All right, so are we having fun yet? <laughs> All right, three, verse three. Um, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. Okay, so he's saying, I just washed you with the word. <laughs> now you're clean. Go with it. We go, all I got out of it was the scripture. <laughs> He's going, you didn't get the washing? You know, I was scrubbing your back really good. <laughs> scrubbing your brain really good, you know? Um, but we get used to the file cabinets in our head. And it's just the next one, and shoot it in there. And, and trust me, again, I'll, I'll, say this along this line but if you get alzheimer's down the road it's a degenerative thing of the brain if you just stuck it in a file cabinet in your brain then you're out of luck but he's a life in you Amen. and your spirit is what should be getting all this and communing back with him in it we shouldn't pass up anything that we can of this because it's not just how much we can get into our, our bucket and then go out and impress people. It is, Lord, if I don't get anything the rest of the year, may I start focusing on these, you know, verses that we're discussing here. May I get those? May I have it by life may i realize that this is my life and when i walk around i walk according to the life of the word not the scriptures that are commanding certain things the life of the vine uh, <clears throat> verse four again abide in me and i in you okay so he's he's saying uh here's what we get well He's the, he's the vine, I'm just a branch, and I'm supposed to abide in him? Why can't he do that work? He is. He's abiding in you. He's not leaving you. You may ignore him. You may act like none of this has any validity in your life. But if you're born again, he's in there. He's available. He wants to, this is the vine talking. I'm, I'm the, not just the external vine. The life of me is in you. Well, how do I abide in that? Just 
claim it, walk in it, believe it, look at it as true. <laughs> look at it as a true washing instead of a, a question mark. It's him, okay? I mean, don't tell me there are not many times during the day that you can't tell when something's just you. <laughs> you go, well, that was me, you know. Okay, well, get back in, you know. Now, Colossians deals with this more, but I realized once I got rolling here that the, the Lord really did want me to hit this in John 15. So we'll go back. I don't know how many more times I have on all this, but anyway. Um, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. So, um, if, we, if we believe that uh, being involved with the church ministries or our own ministries or anything like that is sufficient, uh, and a lifetime of it, is sufficient for the Father, I'm telling you, it's not. He wants the life of the vine coming through us. We, we could look at every ounce of our ministry and we could say, well, you know, I really, I really laid down my life for this, but, but did we? I mean, did we not do that for, to promote us? I mean, that's the question. Are you, are you bringing forth fruit, but it's not fruit, it's works? That's the question. Did you do it to be seen? Did you do it to be uh, f felt like you're important? Your importance can't be what you do. And we've had that here many times over the years. I've seen it so many times with people that would come in and their value was based on their importance to what they were adding in. I'm doing this, therefore I'm important and I'm important to the Lord, and I'm important to Randy, and their importance was that area that they did, but it was like that's what, it's like that was what was buoyant that kept their head above the water, you know, that. Pop that balloon, and I got nothing. You know what I mean? Take it away either by saying, okay, I'm gonna take away everything that you, you're doing, you're going to send me into a psychological tailspin. <laughs> or um, spiritually share in such a way that they get it and they go, oh, my God, I got nothing. I'm empty. Okay, well, you start with, back with the Lord this time. Just say, Lord, I want you. Lord, I'm... You know, I can do nothing without you. Nothing. He calls it nothing. Except you abide in me. Abiding in him meaning I am in union with you. Your life, vine, is in my branch. And I would like for you to produce so that the father gets what he wants by the son. Isn't that really what we're talking about here? So... Um, you say, well, Randy, it's hard to start all over in the Lord. Well, it's better than continuing on down that road knowing, you know, <laughs> it, it is hard. It is difficult. And you go through a lot of gyrations that mess with you and all this kind of stuff. But if your heart is in tune, if your heart is in tune, if your heart says, I do not want to stand before God based on me and my best. Man, it is best is altogether vanity, David said in the Psalms. I don't want to stand before him in, in uh, all my, you know, vanity of vanity, all his vexation of spirit. Well, it doesn't seem vexation. Well, it doesn't now. <laughs> Whether you stand before him and go, he goes, okay, I'm looking for Jesus out of you. Anywhere, anytime, where was he? Where did he happen? Okay, so this is just my opinion, but I just think it's, you know, I just think it's easier. I just think it's better to stop and go, you know what, Lord, 
I just want to make this clear. I do love you, and I want to be with you. And okay, sometimes I guess maybe all the time I've messed up to some degree in my in my spirit and in the way and then the, the actual thing behind it. But I want to get in tune with you. How long do you think that that takes? I mean, we were talking about we were talking about plants today, Deb and I. And I said, she said, well, I just don't know how you know to help this plant. And I said, you take some scissors, you cut this one off, clear some of the dead parts off of the stem, get a glass of water, set it in there, and in a few days you'll start seeing little roots coming out. After they've got to a certain degree, pull it out of there, get a thing with dirt, put it in there, keep it watered for a couple of days, bingo! You go, well that was fast, that's a fast recovery, <laughs> you know. Well, I'm telling you, you get in the right track, you got, what do you got back in you? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You got everything that counts backing you. It's not, it's worth it. You know, then, you know, you're not driving the car. You know, who was it? Somebody, somebody recently, one of the countries or states I've been in recently, they had a sign on their car and it says, you know, Jesus is my co-pastor. And I went, don't you think he ought to be driving? <laughs> co-pilot, co-pilot, sorry. All right. What? Um, no more can ye. No more can ye. Does that sound good? Verse 4, no more can you. This is the Lord saying, no more can you. He's saying, don't do it anymore. But he's also saying, if you don't abide in him, then no more can you bring forth any fruit, anything that I want, or, or bring forth that which comes from Christ and not you. Except. You abide in me. All right. Anybody ever heard this phrase? Except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Anybody ever heard that before? Okay. You say, well, you know, I, I'm sure there's another way. And the Lord will go, no, except you be born again. Well, I can try. Try all you want. Except you be born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. He says, um, except you abide in me. You cannot bear fruit of itself. A branch cannot bear fruit of itself. It is by its very nature must be connected not just to the vine, but the husbandman. He may, he may need to prune. He may need to fertilize. He may need to do whatever he's got to do, spray it for bugs or whatever. There are many things along the way that can mess with you but if you've got a father that wants the son, if you've got a, a husbandman that is working hard on you not to make you a great Christian or to make you, you know, a great minister, but to make you a, a straw through which the life of Christ comes, you got no problems. I'm telling you, you, you got it made when you got it all hooked up, you know. It's fine. It's fine. So, and um, so verse 5, I am the vine and you're the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. And there's that phrase, without me you can do nothing. All right. <clears throat> so that's the, that's the vine talking. Why would you say that? You know? I can do all kinds of stuff. I can raise up a church. I can start a ministry. I can, I can uh, be involved. I can uh, tithe. I can do all those things. And he said, no, yeah, without me, you can do it all without me. So therefore, it equals nothing. <clears throat> Verse 6, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Okay, so 
I don't want to go into the theology of the burning, but um, our immediate thing is, is hell. Uh, so let's just say he is talking about hell here. Okay, let's just say that. All right? Why would you go to hell then? Because I'm not a Christian. No, you go to hell because you are a branch. That now I believe there's more to this. Okay, don't freak out too much. <laughs> but I, I wanted to go to the, for sure the extreme because that's where most people read this anyway. If the, if what they believe this is saying is then, then God is serious about getting His Son out of us. That's what you. That's what you could conclude. Then you go. Even under hell? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay, so that, that troubles us. But if that's, if that's true, then that needs to do something in us that says, you know what? I think this father guy is really, really serious about this area. You see what I'm saying? I mean, if you're going to go in that, then you need to say, He's really serious, and if he's that serious, then I want to be plugged into him, not just so I don't go to hell, but I recognize how seriously he wants the son out of me, out of me, the branch, out of me, out of me. <clears throat> now, he's going to get into, uh, after this, he's going to get into the love aspect, because there is that. It can't all be fear of hell. Can I get an Amen. It has to be a desire for someone other than ourself, okay? Um, verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Okay, so he's saying, you know, what I am getting through now. I'm not, you're just not abiding in me and I in you. But my words, which come from my heart, are getting in you. And now you're going to start asking what you will or praying according to this same spirit that the, fa the son who is the vine wants to bring forth and give to the father. And the father wants to partake of that which is his son. And that's going to abide in you. And that word will not leave you. And you will start thinking that way. And you will start operating that way. And you'll start seeing it everywhere in the scriptures because it's there. But because... Much of religion has made us so self-centered that all we're looking for is the next, you know, promise, you know, precious promise, the next thing that's going to promote me or whatever. And so let's abide in that until his words abide in us and then the heart of that reality start taking over our branch. Verse 8, herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall be you be my disciples. Now he's fixing, we go, okay, okay, yeah, so this is going to make me a disciple. He's going to pretty soon down here say, you're no more disciples, I call you friends because you're, uh, greater love hath no man than he laid down his life for his friend. <laughs> it's always cross stuff. It's always God reality. It's always, that's not man's reality. Let's face it, it's not. I mean, every Christian, no matter what their denomination or anything is, looks to the cross and says a dying man did it all. Not a, not a son of God that walked the earth and did miracles. That guy that died for us right there did it. That, that's that only makes sense when you make it a religion and say, okay, well, he did it, but don't ask us to do it. Well, okay, what life is going to be in you if you're his branch and he's divine? It's going to be that life, that kind of life, okay? So the fruit may not be sweet cherries or, you know, stuff like that. It may be the fruit of selflessness. It may be the fruit of the life of Christ laying down his life for others, for other branches or whatever. You see what I'm saying? I mean, this thing, it really is beautiful how, how it's said, but it came out of the heart of Jesus. 
It came out of the heart of Jesus. It's more beautiful than a poem. It's more beautiful than something that rhymes. It is the eternal song of God that is flowing out of his heart so that we could hear it and go, oh my God, this is, you know, <laughs> this is better than, a, what is it, the top singers of the world or whatever. This is, this is the song of eternity. And we get to hear it. And we don't have to read this in fear anymore. He says, well, if you don't, if you don't abide in me and die in you, then you're going to wither up and you're going to die and you're going to be burned up. And we go, oh, that's me. Everybody, every Christian eventually starts there. Oh, that's me. I'll never make it. You'll have his life in you. <laughs> the Father's not going to, you know, just reject you while you still have the life of Christ in you. So verse 9, um, as the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. All right, so, so now he's moved from fear to love. All right, so he says, as the Father has loved me. How has the Father loved me? So have I loved you. How's that been? It is a, an endless flow of self-forgetfulness between them as the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit give themselves constantly to the other so that the, so that the other never has to worry about themselves. All they have to worry about is giving to another. That's all there is. That's love. God is love, you know. <laughs> I heard a song the other day that says, uh, Jesus is handsome, but God is just love. <laughs> well, I don't know if Jesus was handsome, but he is part of the Trinity, so he is love. And love can't function by itself. You can't stick a monk or whoever in, in, a, in a monastery by himself and him display love, not, not God kind of love. It, you have to have someone to lavish that on, to give it to, to, to have it in your heart for, to, to um, let that love feed you. I don't know how to say it. Let that love feed you. It feeds you, you know, even if you were stuck in there, there is a possibility of another, you know, living inside of you or Continue ye in my love. If you, okay, now here's a tricky one. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Well, he's going to tell you that the commandment was to abide in his love, and we're supposed to abide in their love. He's going to say that. The commandment, isn't, he is not saying keep, keep the Ten Commandments. Keep the 300 and what da da commandments. And if you don't, then you're not abiding in me. Well, that's just dumb. I mean, I'm sorry, but it's just dumb even to think that. It's, in, in this sense is what I mean. I'm not trying to degrade anybody. I'm just saying he's, everything he said thus far is abide in me and my life will abide in you. Well, if his life is abiding, really his life is abiding in you, then you're not having to try to keep anything. Okay, so, so the, the vine says to you as a branch, okay, stick in here now. And he points to the branch and said, now, I'm going to need some fruit out of you. I'm going to need that fruit to be, you're going to have to love all the branches here and even the buzzards, man, you're going to have to love them. They're going to poop on you and all kinds of stuff. Got to love everybody. Okay, just go out there and do it. Notice Jesus didn't go off on saying any of that stuff. His life is love. He is that way. He doesn't have to prescribe it and say, okay, do it. I mean, so much of the See, that's why we don't teach the fruit of this thing. We teach the life of it. We put the emphasis on You get the life, you get everything else. I was talking, which reminds me, I need to get back with Brother Wayne, but which reminds me when I was <laughs> in... Uh, in Virginia, and uh, I was asked by the pastor if I could come back in October, and uh, and 
do a thing on getting people filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, he, so we're talking about it a little bit. And he says, so what's your view on speaking in tongues? Or what's your view on tongues is what he said. And I said, well, I look at them like a pair of shoes. And he goes, what? I said, well, if you get a new pair of shoes, the tongues come with it. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> you know, the life and the fruit of that life comes with it. It's not something you have to worry about. It's not something you have to produce. It's not something that you have to fret over. And, oh, no, I'm, I bet I'm withering right now. I'm going to be tossed in hell. Okay. Read the beginning again. <laughs> you know, that's all I can say. Read it. It's, the security is strong. All right? Even a hacker can't break this. All right? <clears throat> um, Um, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Okay, so he's talking and he's saying, this is what I'm telling you to do, Branch. This is the way he's commanding them. But he's not, he's saying, this is it. I want my love, my joy to abide in you. Well, he just said love first and then joy. I want it to abide in you. And, you know, he's not. The commandment is that if the life is there, you get everything else. That was my point of the shoe thing. Um, <clears throat> that This is my commandment, that you... Love one another as I have loved you. Okay, so now, where did this come from? Where did this phrase come from? How did he get from where he was to here? This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. That's a new commandment, amen? The new commandment, not love as I have loved you, or, or, or not love, you know, what is it? As yeah, as yourself. Love, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, what if you got poor self-image? Yeah, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just trying to get a little break here so I could drink. But as I have loved you, which he laid down his life to bring that about. Um, so he's saying this is, if you, if you want a commandment, it's this. Abide in me and I in you and... Love one another as I have loved you. That's the commandment. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about other commandments. And he's saying, but if you have my life in you, your joy will be full and you'll love. But my question to you was, where did this come from? Do you have your class tonight? Okay, I need to quit real soon. Where did, where did this thing come from? Um, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you, which is to love. This is my commandment, love. Lay down your life for him. Um, henceforth I call you not servants or disciples, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends for all things I have heard of my Father I have made known to you. He's talking about laying down your life because that's what his life in you is going to do. There's not going to be any greater love in his mind. Not that you, 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 you've read it in, in 1 John 3.16. By this perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our life not for God but for the brethren. Jesus says here that you lay down your life for your friends or, or uh, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. He changes, he turns, it sounds like he's turned into another subject, but he's been talking about abiding and him abiding in us and he's defining the kind of fruit that's going to come out of us. 
Do you see it? It's a manifestation. This is something you don't just have in your heart and go, okay, well, you know, I slap you in the face, but I have love in my heart. No, no, no. It's not that at all. Did you have something? Okay, just checking. Um, so it is truly, um, he is trying to get this spirit out of the branch. And there's only one way to do it. You have to abide in him and let his life abide in you. And then that will produce the fruit. And the fruit will be this. The Father will be glorified. And this is the Father glorified, that you bear a whole lot of this kind of stuff. <laughs> so I don't know from your perspective. But all I can tell you is from, from I believe, the Lord's perspective and from what I'm getting it from it, this is just so simple, it's easy. It's just him, and it's, and it's wanting him, and it's wanting him for the glory of the Father. And it's, it's not, it's not self-occupation. Well, how do I do this? What does that mean? I'm going to burn. I know I am. You know, all this stupid, all this stupid stuff. Don't go there. You're, you're too self-focused. You already missed the point. You know, just say what he wants you to say. What does he want you to say? Um, you know, I mean, it's like a, it's like a husband, what he wants his wife to say, for example. Okay, I'm with you. Okay, I'm with you. Right? I'm with you. Let's do it. Well, he's the husband, and we're the bride. We're the wife of the lamb. And I'm with you, Jesus. Well, where is this going to lead to laying down our lives? How? In what situation? Can't tell you that don't know but it's a spirit so I don't have to worry about it because he'll do it father bless this word that Jesus said in John 15 and help us to get past knowing about pruning and knowing about all this stuff but never making it something real in our lives where we 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 really pray according to what the father wants we really we really pray what the son wants and then we realize to get that starts with abiding but it includes pruning and we should look for it in that light instead of just living in a world like every other sinner that lives in this world dreading the next crisis instead of us looking forward to that opportunity for the lord for you father to cut us back so that more of Christ can come. So we, we, we're already in your hands, so we, in our hearts, put ourselves in your hands in these things. In Jesus' name.